rescuers took this porcupine in as a baby and brought him into adulthood. With fond memories, they set him free, back into the wild to live the life he should. Even though they saw the porcupine regularly, it wasn't until a year after he was set free that he decided to take a trip back to his friends and greet them with a special surprise. This porcupine's tale begins in the South African town of Hotsbrut with a potato farmer. Year after year, he worked hard on his land, despite how difficult farming can be. But while he was glad about his crops flourishing, because of this, his ground was a haven for hungry animals, particularly porcupines. These sneaky creatures loved the salt, naturally found in potatoes. Farms are like magnets for porcupines, since there's so much they can eat. The potatoes, the sap from the wood, the residual sweat from tools. It's practically a buffet for the animals. As much as they love it, that can't be said for the farmers who find porcupines a nuisance since they directly affect their livelihoods. Because of this, many farmers set out porcupine traps with the intention of getting them off the property and sometimes even killing them. This is how the little baby porcupine ended up in the hands of a kind farmer who had too much of a kind heart to end the pet's life. So instead, in 2015, he took it to the Dakari School and Wildlife Orphanage. Dakari was founded by husband and wife Ian and Michelle Mary Field, who have dedicated their lives to helping African wildlife. They use their knowledge of animals and conservation to teach children about the importance of helping local wildlife. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. Since founding it in 2006, the couple had one goal, which is stated on the company's official website. Having a safe place to rehabilitate injured or orphaned animals has always been a part of the vision of Dakari. It's also grown into an integral part of the education of local children. The farmer wanted to make sure that he would be giving the baby porcupine to someone who would definitely care for it, which is why he was so glad that Dakari were willing to take in the orphan baby. Their passion for animals was clear. They named the little porcupine Spiky, and since the company hadn't given home to a porcupine before, they were quick to research how to properly bring up the animal. Ian Merrifield told the Dodo in 2016 about how difficult it was to care for the animal. He had to be bottle-fed but we had to estimate what he would need. We tried to do research online, but there wasn't a lot of information. Well, the couple lacked specific porcupine care. However, they made up for in having extensive knowledge in caring for small animals. We used mammals that we cared for before as a baseline, Ian explained, and we added egg yolk and cream to the normal cow milk. The rescuers added one more prime ingredient to Spikey's concoction, Ian revealed. We added protection, which is a bacteria that they need to aid in digestion. For the first few weeks, this is all little Spikey would have. He loved it that much, but as the porcupine grew bigger, his appetite grew bigger too. Spikey went from his milk concoction to a seemingly delicious mix of diced vegetables and fruit and porridge, which he couldn't get enough of. Merrifield reflected on Spikey's character, stating that he really liked eating. Eating and sleeping were his whole life. Soon enough, Spikey warmed to his new human parents and the love and affection from both of them and Dakari volunteers. You may think, how do you pet a porcupine without getting spiked? But the front and underside of Spikey's bodies are usually covered in really soft fur. Merrifield told the Dodo the volunteers would stroke his belly under the arms and behind his very human-like ears. Spikey would jump up in their lap, nuzzle their neck, and it seemed because of his adoring friends and family, Spikey grew up in the orphanage, big, strong, and most importantly, healthy. One day, the time came for Spikey to leave the orphanage behind and live his best life in the wild, Maryfield explained. We just decided he would be happier and free, and if he had any problems, he would come back for food. Despite being set free into the wild, it seemed that Spikey simply enjoyed the company of his human parents and friends more than his own kind. Merrifield joked, We aren't sure if it's because he needs the food or if he just enjoys our company. In fact, Dakari received regular visits from the porcupine, but his next appearance would come with a very special surprise. During one of his visits back to Dakari, little Spikey actually brought back some porcupines of his own to meet his human family. It seems that Merrifield's got the porcupine's sex wrong, he insisted. We thought Spikey was definitely a male, so we were a bit surprised when she showed up with babies. 
Despite the revelation that Spikey was a girl this entire time, the Dakari workers were overjoyed that the porcupine had brought her little family to meet them. Maryfield thinks that Spikey was so proud of what she had made that she wanted to show off her porcupines to her humans. Even though Spikey felt right at home at Dakari, her babies were still very cautious around humans and often remained in the shadows rather than going inside the building. Spikey's human family also welcomed a male companion to the orphanage, presumably the father of her babies. Ian expressed his contentment that Spikey is doing well. It's wonderful seeing Spikey living a full life in the wild and having a family of her own. I feel like a very proud parent, and so he should. He and his wife and the wonderful volunteers at Dakari are who to thank for Spikey's healthy and happy condition. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.